Hey gang, Tim here at Core Electronics, and today we're diving headfirst into transparent filaments. So this will explore which filaments give the best results to create see-through components and outline different slicer and printing settings to improve translucency results. I'm also going to talk about successful and not so successful methods of post-processing options to improve clarity. Personally, transparent materials are the most fun when you light them up with a light source. Being able to see the 3D printed material with all its layer lines radiating out light can be spectacular. That or creating transparent clamshell cases where you can see all the electronics and wires connected and secured inside. Transparent filament is also a great method to iron out any niggling 3D printing issues, be it of the particular 3D printer, the slicing program, or in the actual CAD design. By being able to see through the material, it makes it very easy to see the internal issues that need addressing. For instance, if there are any missing internal lines or undesired empty spaces in your model, you'll be able to locate them and see them very clearly. Or if there's internal burn marks, you'll be able to see them inside the print of the model. These both cause weaknesses in the final product, which would otherwise have gone unnoticed if an opaque colored filament was instead being used. The only other way to be aware of these shoes like this would be either a very watchful eye or nose, or to really pay attention to your CAD files. Perhaps a tiny smoke sensor running along a 3D printer would be handy. Naturally, choose materials which allow light to travel through it. This is to get the best transparency results. So, choose filler materials with the name transparent or natural somewhere within its name. I've been using CPE transparent and getting interesting results. CP is a great material in terms of strength and toughness properties, but if your goal is glass prints, what I have over here, Polymaker in particular, Polymaker Poly Smooth is the way to go. This Poly Smooth is a special PVB resin that can be dissolved with alcohol. Now, the great 3D print general has done some amazing things with this filament, which I will show and also link down below proper excited to try and replicate some of his work. PVB is normally used as a bonding layer in laminated safety glass, and that is where you will see through it the most. It is proper amazing the different materials you can 3D print. For instance, if you've got serious cash to burn, you could 3D print glass directly, sidestepping this whole process. The machines that they have tucked up there in MIT are proper amazing. But back to transparent plastic filaments. So if you're using fresh transparent filament of some description and get the settings right, you'll end up with a translucent milky material similar to this. They definitely let light through, but it would be a stretch to call it transparent or glass at this stage. It is the post-processing that takes these parts to a higher level of transparency. Dedicated post-processing can get these kind of components to the level of glass. Now, let me state, air bubbles and layer lines. These are the two main enemies to clear and transparent 3D printed parts. Air bubbles give an opportunity to bounce light around inside the material and layer lines effectively act as lenses which also bounce the light around inside them. I'll throw an image up to help visualize this. So the slicing program that I'll be using is Cura, but any slicing program worth its salt will have similar settings named something similar. There is a video on Ultimaker Cura as an overview guide for makers, which is a great reference point if this is your first time encountering Cura and you want to hit the ground running. I'm going to put a link of it down in the description. Now, put simply, Ultimaker Cura is a software which allows you to turn the computer files of your design into a recipe for the 3D printer to follow. It is available online and is completely free and it's software used by over a million users worldwide. Let's jump into Cura and I'll show you exactly what I do. First and foremost, general settings. We're gonna print really, really slowly. So go into that print speed. We're gonna bring that value all the way down to 20, even 15 millimeters per second. Even when the nozzle is traveling from one location to another, slow that speed and do this and better results will happen.
Next, we're going to increase the flow rate of the material coming out of the nozzle. Normal flow rate is at 100%, and I crank it all the way around to 105 to 107%. I have even heard people pushing it to 115%. Now, more material makes for less chance of air pockets, and this will really help improve transparency when printing fully filled parts. Now, you want to increase the extruder nozzle temperature by around 5 degrees. From that, increase degree by degree until the result is what you want. A high enough temperature will enable the layers to fuse together correctly and perhaps even more so than normal. That you can find here. Printing temperature increase by five. Next, when printing parts, if they can be hollow, make them hollow. Otherwise, use a very low infill percentage, like 5%. That's what I did for this Buddha over here. Also, Take advantage of a mirror-like finish that a properly calibrated and dialed in print platform can achieve. This will make the bed surface lines less visible as you can see on this T-Rex. An absolute modern motif of 3D printing. Improving transparency from certain directions can result in other directions becoming more opaque. Much like how 3D printed components are stronger in certain directions than others, there are different orientations that allow for better transparency than others when 3D printing with transparent filaments. So this section will focus on how to improve transparency results from different planes when looking at them perpendicularly. You can see here, particularly on this T-Rex. <coughs> This is how it was orientated when it was printed. And if you look directly down into this transverse Z plane, you can see through it to a certain degree. However, if I try to look at it from this orientation, it is much harder to see through. I'll demonstrate this with a clam shell case as well. This over here, you can see quite clearly through this way, however, in this orientation, it is very milky and not transparent. So for parts like this and this, the method taken is to minimize all potential for little air bubbles or gaps to exist like before and crucially to prevent internal scratches to occur. So let us jump back into Cure. So the previous settings still apply, but for this particular scenario, I always use a fine layer height or something like 0.1 millimeter. This is to ensure no gaps are left in corners where a thicker line would not be able to get to. The next setting I change is combing mode. I set combing mode to off. By setting combing mode to off, I stop it from traveling inside already printed areas and this prevents scratches on this transverse plane surface. The next setting I look at is Z hop whenever retracting. This is a checkbox which will prevent the nozzle from scratching across the transverse plane surface whenever possible. So Z-hop whenever retracting, and I also increase that Z-hop amount, I do this over here, to about four millimeters. This means when there is no choice but for the nozzle to travel across the printed part, it will lift itself up and avoid scratching that transverse plane surface that we're trying to keep really nice. Now, all of these settings particularly increasing the material flow and nozzle temperature can cause stringing as the nozzle leaks during travel. So you will need to spend some time tinkering with retraction settings. So in particular, when we type in retraction, the retraction distance, I increase by one to two millimeter increments until the nozzle no longer leaks during a travel movement and increasing retraction speed is also very helpful. And I increase that in steps of five millimeters per second. This is very important to avoid burn marks. Here are two examples of the same clamshell case with different retracting settings, which produce vastly different results. Now, when it comes to creating single line vases or objects, 
and the translucency desired is in the X or Y plane and strength is not necessary, I use very different Cura settings. In fact, I start by increasing the actual nozzle diameter of your particular 3D printing machine by swapping it out. Then I increase the layer width and layer height. In Cura, this can be done easier just by using the fast print profile. The goal is to make large cylindrical lines so that internal refraction is minimized. I'm gonna throw up an image of a vase made by Aiden using layer lines of 1.2 millimeters and you can already see how much more transparent and see-through it is before even post-processing. Link to his guide in the description. Now, in doing this, it will lower the resolution of your print. Keep in mind, post-processing is gonna do this as well. So compromises just have to be made. This Buddha is somewhat of a middle ground example. No post-processing has been done to it and it was printed using fast profile with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle with two line wall thicknesses and a triangle infill of 5%. Thanks to the British Museum for this particular CAD file, I've also linked this down below. ABS materials, you can use acetone to smooth out layers and this will improve transparency. With the PolySmooth PVB material, you can instead use alcohol to smooth out those layers. A spray or mist bottle is the best way to apply these solvents. Spray once every couple of days for almost two weeks and the longer you take doing this, the better your result will be. When you do spray it, make sure not to touch the model until it's completely dry, unless you want your fingerprints to be all over your subject. I want beautiful glass prints, so I'm experimenting currently with this. I also had an idea with CPE, as it is a very strong material. So I thought, why not sand and buff it? Making sure to use that buff wax material, I whipped out the Dremel and a plastic buffing kit. This is the particular Dremel I used. Now, this process is both very labor intensive and prone to apprentice marks, but I will say it does improve the top surface finish. However, a correctly dialed in printer produces a much better bedside surface, which is superior to what I've been able to achieve with polishing plastic to try and improve its transparency. I can demonstrate this best with the T-Rex. What you can see right here on this side is the area on the head where I buffed it. If you come down to the body, this is the surface left after the printer finished printing it. This is the orientation it was printed in. On the other side is the bed surface and it is just a better finish than what I was able to achieve buffing it. So I have some work to do to get my dream of glassy 3D prints, so I better crack on. Like and subscribe if you dig our content and until next time, Stay cozy.